Hello, this is John Cordia. We are continuing our study on financial stewardship. Today we are looking at first fruits. We already went through the first part where we learned about tithes. Today we are going to learn about the first fruits. Now there are tithes, the first fruits, the alms, and also the seed giving. Yes, so they are the four areas of giving. Now. First fruits, what are they? A lot of people are confused about what is meant by the first fruit. In an agricultural society, it is what you gain when you have a harvest. Now, in the church, in our life, we take a calendar year, whatever the increase there is, you pay that complete increase the amount of that increase to the church or to your pastor now if you've been getting 100 rupees and you were then there was an increase of 50 rupees now we are getting 150 rupees you will give 50 rupees only not 150 total now that is the first increase of the year now after that if you were to get more increases that is yours to keep but the first increase you're supposed to give as a first fruit offering there's a blessing that comes with that and I have listed them out and uh, you'll be taught one by one what they are and uh, Let's go to some of them, yes? But before that, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 9 and 10, pardon the noises that you hear around, that uh, is part of the recording, my AZ is not working, and um, I have not set up the studio completely yet, but um, yeah, you, get, you will get what you need to get. Let's go to Leviticus 23, verse 9 to 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, say to them, When you come into the land which I gave you, and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. This is where the first fruit is introduced. Throughout the Bible, you see that the Lord expects that first fruit from you. Why? We'll cover that later. In the New Testament, it says in Romans 11:16, For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Of course, it is talking about Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yes. What you need to understand is that the first fruit offering must be taken to God's house and be given to the priest. Now, in our culture, it is to be given to the pastor for his personal use or to the church for the church use. Whatever it is, you have to give the first fruit. Yes, and it is an offering that is made as a sign that you do not love money. Let's go into that. Yes, now there's a lot of blessing and a lot of things uh, that come. Um, which we are not going to cover now, but later we are going to cover. One of the things is in Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 31, it says, And for the wood offering at times appointed, and for the first wood, remember me, O God, for good. If your finances are failing, if things are not going as you planned with your finances, remember the first wood offering. The Lord doesn't want to steal any money from you, but it is He who gives you the power to accumulate and to make wealth. Hallelujah. The accumulation is what the first fruit is all about. See, by giving that to God, God's intention, God's, God's intention is not that you become miserable, his intention is that you live your life to the fullness, for that is what Christ came for. So, it shows God that you are not in love with the money, 
but instead you're in love with him yes therefore he can trust you with more it shows the gratitude you have for the increase he gave and it ex- expresses your love for his word your obedience to his word hallelujah the motivation of course is generosity if like i said if you want to give 150 that's up to you but only the increase which is in this case and this example is 50 rupees is to be given yes so suppose you get 500 after that that's your skip but for a calendar year the first fruit it's obvious what that is belongs to the lord hallelujah i hope this is very clear hallelujah we do not want to end this message of hope and love without letting you know that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved god loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son our lord and savior jesus so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son jesus to condemn you but that through him you might be saved the bible also tells us that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved If you need help reconciling your life with God, call this radio station now or visit us at www.reconcenter.com. No matter what you're going through, there is an answer. There is hope and there is love. His name is Jesus. Call out to him. Call out to Jesus. This is Pastor John Cordial. signing off God bless you